Winslow Homer was a watercolorist who uh, really loved to paint the outdoors, and he was a very avid outdoorsman. He would travel all around, do all kinds of fun outdoorsy stuff, and then he'd paint on location, which is what we're going to do today, is we're going to do a drawing outside, and then we're going to take it inside, and we're going to ink it and paint it. Now, this is the scene I'm going to paint, and then here are, is me drawing out my sketch. Now, a big part of making a sketch of the outdoors work for a painting is to uh, not worry about getting every single detail down, but to draw a few things in high detail and then kind of break everything else into some shapes. So um, as you're drawing, you're going to have to decide what things are going to be uh, drawn in detail or rendered and what things are going to be drawn as kind of big shapey spaces or abstracted. So as you move through this, you're going to end up just picking little bits and pieces. And as you see, um, I couldn't show you both my uh, notebook and the background at the same time. So um, if you get confused on what I'm drawing, feel free to pause it and flip back to where the beginning, um, or just kind of go with it, right? Because your picture that you're drawing is going to be different than my picture anyways. So find yourself someplace you like the view of, start drawing things into shapes. Now after you draw your shapes in the way back, sometimes the best thing you can do is throw a few of the trees that are in the front up in front of those shapes and add, draw some details on those. And then the background color will kind of fill in the fact that there's more trees behind. You don't have to draw every single tree in the forest, just the front couple, and then make a nice shape of them behind. Or a few shapes if there's like some lighter colored trees and some darker colored trees. Once you start getting your drawing done, you know, want to pack it all up, take it inside, and then I use a, uh, a like a big pen here to ink this, but you can ink this with whatever you want. I would recommend not using your sharpie though, because the lines will be so big and thick that they're gonna end up covering over a lot of your details. So if you have a fine line sharpie or if, like some kind of fancy inking pen, use that. And if you don't, just find yourself any kind of pen and use that. It should work fine with the watercolors. Um, right, and now just like when I was abstracting outside while I was drawing, I don't need to trace every single detail with my pen. I'm just going to trace the main bits. And I'm going to leave some of the details in pencil behind because some of the pencil will show through and that will give me another layer of detail to my drawing. So I'll have the ink lines, the pencil lines, and then the colors that I'm putting over the top. Now, if you're really uncomfortable inking your drawing, you can skip that step and go right to painting. Not everybody um, inks their watercolors. Um, Winslow Homer didn't. He just drew with a pencil and then painted right on top of that. But he was using a lot more densely pigmented watercolors than we have. Our watercolors are going to be a lot lighter. They're going to kind of float a little bit on the surface. And his uh, were really thick, so they would make those nice, rich, dark tones that we're going to have a tough time making. So after I've inked all of the uh, important parts, I'm gonna then move on and start painting. Now, when you're using watercolors at home, it's important to be clean because um, you want your parents to love you, and I want your parents to love you. When you 
you cannot make a huge mess all the time and expect that they're going to clean it up for you. So you need to make sure that you're being neat as you work through the process. So you're going to need a cup of water, you're going to need either a few napkins or a cloth that you can get dirty. So that way if you spill anything or if you have any colors that you need to clean up, you can use those things and do it immediately. You don't want to have to spill something and then go running around looking for something to clean it up with. You want to prepare just in case you spill something and then if you don't use it, you can always put it away afterwards. Okay. Now, uh, once I'm done inking here in a second, I'm going to open up my watercolors and I'm going to start getting them ready. This little piece of cardboard thing, that's not useful. You can get rid of that. Take my paintbrush and I'm going to add water to the colors I'm going to use. Now, because these watercolors aren't particularly um, deep, there's not a ton of watercolor paint in this tray, you want to make sure that you use it carefully and that you don't mix your colors together in the, in the actual pans for the colors because if you do that then you're not going to have enough paint in there to wash out the color that you mixed in you're going to be stuck with the color that you make so you want to be careful to mix everything that you're going to mix in the tray and you want to use as little paint as you can and as much water to kind of cover your space um, now notice uh, as i'm going i decided to make it a little bit darker and keep adding a bit more brown in because I want this kind of dead grass hay part of the drawing to, to be really light so that way I have more browns as I move back further through my, my painting. Now, um, when you're doing this, if you put a little paint down and then you go back for water and you take it right to the paint that you already had on your paper, you can then spread that paint out from there. And that's a good way to use your watercolors really efficiently. Now, my hand is moving at three times normal speed, so don't try to paint this fast, just go a little slower, take it at your own pace, work a little bit, let it dry a little bit, work a little bit more, and bounce around your paper so that you don't end up painting everything all at once. Okay. Now if you have a paintbrush you like to use better than the paintbrush that comes with the kit, that's fine. However, I'm going to encourage you not to use a huge paintbrush. Using a small paintbrush when you're starting out is good because it's going to pace the um, amount of paint you use, so you're not going to end up cleaning out your whole uh, paint tray to then get a few bits of color on your paper and then wash most of that paint out uh, when you clean your paintbrush. Okay. Now it's hard to see my water off to the right hand side there but you can see I'm not putting a lot of paint into my water. I'm making sure every bit of paint I get is going on my painting and I'm not wasting any of it because I want you guys to be able to do as many paintings as you can um, and if you uh, end up washing all your paint away in the first couple paintings, then you're going to end up having to color other projects with colored pencils. And if at any point we're going to make a painting and you don't have enough paint to do it, you can either use anything you can get your hands on as far as markers and then water, uh, add water to those afterwards, or you can just color it in with the colored pencils. Now you can see here I'm just adding different browns and a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow to, to make my different sections. If you want your colors to be a little darker, you can add a little black, which is what I do for this mountain back here. Um, now, again, if you don't have a great scene that you want to draw at your house, you can just put a few things out in the yard and then draw a picture of them, and that's always a good time. Okay. Take your time. Don't rush. Don't stress about it. Remember to use this little bit of paint as you can. Notice when I go to do my blue, I just barely touch the tip of the paintbrush to the blue, and I put little bits of blue down, and then I go back over them with water and spread it out. Alright, enjoy this, take it too seriously, and uh, just, you know, have fun.
right, when you start getting done, what you want to do is wash your brush out nicely, put it back in your tray, take your towel, wipe out the inside of your tray, close that up, and keep this flat. You do not want to be tipping it, because the little bits of wet paint will run out of it. Right. Good luck, Brittus. Don't make a mess. Good